Hello viewers, this is Health Now Show, your health friend. With me, Jane Kariuki. I'm delighted to welcome you to this show. And on this show, we always say we want to share information. We want to share, uh, to sensitize you on different things, on different ways of handling different conditions, different issues in our communities. And the today is no different because we have a person in our community that we actually have issues dealing with them, handling them, interacting with them, relating with them. And this person is a narcissist personality. In our previous episode, we looked, we defined who this personality is. What are some of the characteristics of this personality? Who is this? How do they interact with us at our workplaces, at our family level, at the community, at our faith situations, in our churches, in our mosque, and any other place that we interact with them because they are with us in the community. And they, they cause a lot of trouble, a lot of conflicts. And on this episode, we are going to continue with my guest, Rachel, and she's going to continue telling us what, what are some of the things, what are some of the contributing factors to this person, this nurse's person in our community, at home and at our workplaces and different other places, like the way I said, the churches. And so where she's going to uh, continue is what are the contributing factors. And if she has any characteristics that probably she left uh, behind, she could still pick it up and then continue with it. Karibu, Rachel. Asante, Jane. Yes. Our viewers, we want to continue with our topic. And we are looking at this person who is a narcissistic, narcissistic person. And this person, as we said formally, is that... Uh, they, they want to be admired a lot. They are so self-centered because of their, 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 their grandiosity. They want to uh, be pro, I mean, appreciated, praised. They want praise. And as a result of that, they will want to, to get it from you, whether you like it or you're not. Maybe at workplace, when you have done a task, or you, when you are their boss, they want to use other people to achieve their work and get praise and admiration from you. At community level, they want to stand out. They want to, to talk about themselves a lot. They could even point to somebody's house and say they built it. Oh? If they are fundies. Oh, okay. And uh, they want to prove they are, want, they are kind of wanting a client uh -huh. to, to secure a client. Mm -hmm. They can point at somebody's house and say they, they are the ones who did that work when they did not do it. It, it can be sad, Jean. But now, the issue of constant, wanting constant praise brings a lot of tension, especially at home, at family setup. Because if a partner is not uh, ready to, const to feed them with praise, they feel like there is a gap and they want to go to outside there to an inferior person so that they can acquire this praise. Oh. Yeah. You see now at family level, mm -hmm. there is that feeling of your partners and sometimes you are, you are, you are being, looking at yourselves at the same level. So hardly will you find a husband praising a, a, a wife. And now this person is feeling the deficit to be praised. Uh -huh. So what they will do is to move out, to, to have better relationships out. Somebody who is so, uh, willing to please to, to them. To praise them, yes. And praise them where they want. Ah. Th that is the deficit now for the praise. Mm -hmm. 
at community level, maybe even at our church, in our churches, this person may not even have the capacity to sustain leadership at uh, maybe a fellowship level. But they are the ones who want, they will grab that chance and they want to stand out so that they are pleased. So they can, what they do is to usurp. Ah. If they are not given responsibility officially, mm -hmm. they will always usurp power eh. from behind. Mm -hmm. And so if you are the one responsible for that group, you'll be left wondering why is so-and-so behaving the way they are behaving. It is because they are narcissistic persons. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to feed the ego, mm -hmm. as we always say. Yes. Yeah. Well, that is at the different levels. At different levels. I have said that the fellowship level, that could happen. At workplace, I have said they will, they will want to own other people's work. So as to get the place. And probably even be given uh, a section to lead because yeah. they are being and seen as if they are doing very well. They start out as very confident people we say. Yeah. So they will always be picked out. And uh, the first impression they create is very impressive. I can Im imagine the feeling of the person whose work is being kind of hijacked. To they are left somebody. demeaned. <laughs> Uh, they, they, they are left demeaned. It could be, it creates a lot of antagonism, yeah. especially at workplace. Yeah. Antagonism at even church level. Because this is a personality you are not understanding. Yes. This is a person who wasn't there when you are planning this project. Yeah. All of a sudden they have come in, owned the, the project, owned the success. And they want to run away, to run with it. Yes. Uh, in in a common setup, uh, in a in a community at community level, maybe as friends or colleagues, you went to school with them. They always want to use you to throw parties, uh. chorus, and we will come. Uh -huh. They are always on the go. They have a lot of energy. Uh -huh. They they will want to uh, use other people. And when you, you happen to plan something social, say as, a, as former classmates or as former schoolmates, they come into the event really prepared and they pick up everything and they run the show. Despite the fact that you are the one who kind of, uh, you could be the person who, who, who offered resources for the function, but they take the show and run with it. They want the visibility. Yes. Yes. They want the visibility, and uh, that is their character. Well, we uh, should be aware of them yeah. so as to place them where they ought to be mm -hmm. and so as not to fall as their victims. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We will come to see what uh, now the, the, the part of now what, what happens with this victim and what we can do about them. Yeah. Uh, do you have any other characteristics? Uh, the, uh, we said that they live in fantasy. Mm -hmm. Their world is fantasy. Mm -hmm. For say an old lady who is 70 and is an assistic person, yeah. they, will, they will always, in their conversation, if you listen to them, yes. they will talk as if they are young ladies. Oh. Uh, when when I get money, I will do A, B, C, D. Uh -huh. When I get money, yes. I can. I, I will. I will want my daughters to dress this way or to live this way. Yes. That kind of thing. And to them, it's like age doesn't matter. Well, we know very well from realities that uh, as people age, there are some responsibilities that they cannot uh, hold. And there are some things that they should not be planning. But in their conversations, because of this fantasy world, they look forward. They will even say, I will set up a frat. And I don't know why they are so much uh, separated from reality. Mm. The, the issue is being separated from reality. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah.
so they they live in their own world they live in their own world mm. and they will demean achievements of other people Where? yes they will achievements of other people in in a way that uh, if i find you driving i will say ah Jen is driving just a bit mm -hmm. and the way i heard she bought a vehicle i thought it was a big vehicle <laughs> And probably uh, that time Jane is feeling now I've achieved even a bit. I should appreciate Jane. Yes. Even when she drives a bit mm -hmm. because I do not know her sources. True. And that is an improvement from her walking mm -hmm. to driving a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True, true, true. But now for this person, yeah. we always demean. Okay. The issue is demeaning. All right. When you are aware that uh, a friend is demeaning you. Yeah. Just live a distance and live your own life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Rachel, we look at, uh, now from, from there, we, we look at what are some of the contributing factors to this person in our workplaces, at home, or in the family setup, and also in the community? What are some of the, what are some of the causes, I would, I, would, I would say, or contributing factors to this person being there? the the contributing factors mm -hmm. this this person are basically uh environmental uh -huh. the way a child grew the way they related with the parents mm -hmm. the way they observed other people do things maybe their peers mm -hmm. they pick that behavior majority of uh, the studies say that majority of them pick that behavior as they grow up mm -hmm. at it manifest around the age of 18 otherwise when the children are small uh, you are not able to really tell their whether they have that personality but as they grow up now apart from their adolescence and the way we know that they are self-centered when they start to settle at their 20s the character now comes out. Mm -hmm. But they really hide it. You might not even know it. Mm -hmm. they, it they consider it. Majority of them will not acknowledge that they are narcissists. Mm -hmm. They live in denial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For those few that could acknowledge, they might get help. Okay. But even when they get help, like they start uh, seeking help, mm -hmm. for those that would seek help, mm -hmm. It is not possible for them to relate with their helpers for long. Mm -hmm. They disengage around the way okay. because of mistrust. Oh. They have a lot of mistrust. Mm -hmm. And that is, this mistrust mm -hmm. makes things work very negatively at our homes. Mm -hmm. If they are siblings, they will mistrust even their own sisters or brothers. They will feel like the brother or a sister doesn't mean well for them. Mm -hmm. Where well, in the actual sense, mm -hmm. this person is harmless. Mm -hmm. uh, at family level, if they are partners, uh, a partner may mistrust the other one mm -hmm. and say you are even maybe alleging something negative for me. And the mistrust now makes the relationship bad. So there's a lot of suspicion. A lot of suspicion. And we say informally that they, they are not good in communication. And the blame game. The, everybody else out there is bad, mm. negative, mm. apart from them. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is responsible for a failure somewhere apart from them. Mm -hmm. So the, this is something that makes relationship with them. Mm -hmm. But okay. they are not good at interpersonal relationships. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hearing you say that uh, for the young people, it starts around 18 years and above. Eh? Yeah. And uh, some of the, this time is when they're in college. Mm. And I'm imagining uh, what interaction would be with uh, a narcissist uh, at, at college level, university, and, and, and such, even before they get to the, the job market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they will start out as go very good people. And that is, I think, at that age is when now they will want parties. Mm -hmm. They want to use other people's resources yes. at college level. Yeah. They will manipulate their colleagues or their peers to use their resources to feed their ego. Mm. If 
uh, for instance, uh, a young man or a young girl is a narcissist, mm -hmm. they will uh, correct. It is it is possible for them to put a group of girls together, mm -hmm. and the girls will be fading even trips and all that. But they are the main characters who are shining out in those trips hey. or parties. Hey. Let's look at, uh, an, at the community level in terms of the, the social, in terms of uh, churches and, and, and all that. At church level, mm. I really don't know how we would say control or... It, it is good for us to be aware that they could be among us. Yes. And when a fellow human being or a fellow believer mm -hmm. behaves in a way that uh, you are not certain about and you do not know why they are behaving that way, mm -hmm. it's good to kind of uh, step back and try to understand them. Mm -hmm. Because if they are a narcissist, mm -hmm. they will command you. I mean... Where, where even uh, that that is not uh, necessary. Mm -hmm. They will give you responsibilities and want to shine out. Mm -hmm. If they are not given chances for leadership, mm -hmm. the most likely thing is that they will move. They can even change churches. churches. Because they are not being recognized. They have a right. Oh. Yes. This is somebody who is ever right. Other people are wrong. Yes. So if you are not recognizing them and praising them, admiring them, uh, finding them important, you are not feeding their ego. So they feel they are irrelevant there. They want to go into a different setup where they will be accepted, where they will be admired, where they will be seen to be important, and where they can man continue with their manipulation. My goodness. This person needs to be made aware of the treatment they are showing others. And if they acknowledge that they have a problem, then that is the only time that they can be helped. Mm -hmm. In most cases, they will not acknowledge. Okay. But in few cases, they may, they, are, they may also be feeling frustrated about the way they behave. Mm -hmm. So in which case, they could be very ready to get help. Mm -hmm. In case they want, they need help, it is possible for them to get help, especially from the psychotherapists. Mm -hmm. Psychotherapy is the talk, it is the talk uh, therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, a specialist, a uh, professional mm -hmm. counselor mm -hmm. will be able to help them to understand themselves, yes. to raise their self-awareness, mm -hmm. to accept uh, criticism mm -hmm. to accept failure mm -hmm. because they also have challenges accepting failure mm -hmm. where in this life we live in mm -hmm. we succeed and other times we fail yeah. even when we fail yeah. that is not the end we have to keep going yes. but for a narcissist he is hit more yes. or she is hit more mm -hmm. by failure than just an ordinary person mm -hmm. so a therapist will help this person to bear failure mm -hmm. and uh, to bear criticism mm -hmm. and to bear a uh, lack of admiration mm -hmm. because this person constantly feels they need to be admired, they want to stand out. So when that rats, they feel they shrink mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they could even become depressed. Oh. So the therapy can help them to raise their self-awareness mm -hmm. and to accept those uh, facts of life. Mm -hmm. Facts of life are the negative parts, yeah. the fact that you can fail and still go on with life, mm -hmm. the fact that, that uh, you don't have to use other people to achieve your means, mm -hmm. and the fact that you don't have to step other people's shoes mm -hmm. uh, or toes mm -hmm. to get to your destiny. Yeah. Just get there without stepping on somebody else. Mm -hmm. I think that is a uh, really help mm -hmm. that therapists can offer. I'm, I'm hearing a, a question from our viewer, and uh, the viewer is asking, now that this person is so self-contained, so self-centered, and you are talking about awareness, how do I then get to let this person seek help? Because as you're saying is... 
they may not even aware that they have an issue. So that is what the viewer is asking. What would you say about that? When they are not uh, ready to to get help, yeah. life doesn't stop. Life goes on. Yes. Because what now we can uh, assist our viewers see mm -hmm. is that even when an assist is not ready to change, life has to go on. The person living with an assist needs help to cope with the narcissistic behavior. Mm -hmm. And the hell, one of the, uh, the central things that this person needs is to set boundaries. If it's at family level, uh, it is partners encountering this. Let the partner who is kind of suffering, let me use the word suffering, mm -hmm. <laughs> because for real, the person who lives with a narcissist for a partner suffers psychologically. Mm -hmm. Let them know that uh, there are ways that they can use to kind of demean this suffering or reduce. And they are called coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And one of the coping mechanisms is never argue with a narcissist. When a narcissist comes up with a with an issue wanting to kind of start an argument, be aware of it, and very fast make a decision not to argue with them. When you fail to argue with them, you kind of put water onto burning fire. So they will not be, you fail to feed their ego. So what happens is that they will draw back and feel very frustrated. But you will live more peacefully that way than taking up an argument in a way. If it is at workplace and you are encountering an assistic person, don't try to prove your point or, or like justify what you are doing. I did this because I saw ABCD. Reduce those justifications. I imagine then, that is also very frustrating on, on, on me. As much as it is frustrating, yeah. it is better when you don't justify why you did what you did, so long as you believe what you did was right, mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. wanting to justify. Because once you, you try on your journey to justify, yeah. you'll be bringing uh, yourself fire ah. from this person. Mm -hmm. Because an assistic person feeds on arguments, feeds on... Uh, those justifications. So the minute you you are you take up a route to justify why you did what you did, then you are you are feeding them and they keep going. They get very energized. Mm. They will not give up along the way. Mm. They don't until you give up and say you have your way. Mm -hmm. So the best way instead of going through this, just have very minimal exchanges where necessary, and avoid justifications or wanting to prove a point. And that way they, you, can, you can manage and live with them peacefully. Mm -hmm. Once in a while an argument will come, yeah. but when you are aware, yeah. you know how to shut it down mm -hmm. by not contributing or not defending yourself. Mm -hmm. Tell them they are right. <laughs> the minute you tell them they are right, yes. they are gone. Ah. Uh? Yeah, that is the way to put up out the fire. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, an argue, if an assist argues with you mm -hmm. and you tell them, oh, I realize you are right. It's like you, they don't like that. They want you to. They enjoy when you, you are arguing. They have energy when you are arguing. But once you lift your hands and say, I realize you are right. Even when you are, not con when you are convinced that they are not right. You just give in. That is the best way to put the fire out. Okay. Another way is to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. Let them know your limits, yes. their limits. Yes. Let them not keep, uh, you know, if it's in a family setup, yes. set boundaries such that they know there are areas they can't, they should not go beyond. Mm -hmm. Set boundaries if it is in the area of, if, if the issue that is bringing conflict 
is finances, uh, finances. Yes. Set boundaries and deal with your finances independent. Uh -huh. If that is what is causing the problem. Uh -huh. But if you are having an assistic person yes. and you decide uh, we are going to run a common account. Yes. I am telling you. <laughs> You'll be in for it. <laughs> what would happen? I'm just imagining. You, we said they are manipulative. Yes. So you will have to be even asking for fear from them. And they enjoy that. When they're in charge. When they're in charge, they enjoy. So what they will do, I mean, they will make sure that you, you remain below there you can even ask for, you, you'll be asking for fear, you will be asking for airtime and everything. So the best way is to set boundaries. As soon as you get to know who you are dealing with, set boundaries uh, respectively, mm -hmm. whichever the area is. Okay, yes. I gave an example of finances. Yes. It doesn't have to be finances alone, yes. mm -hmm. but set the correct boundaries yeah. and get going. Yes. Because right now, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, in our, I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. and in our Christian setup, we say we, we get into a relationship, a marriage relationship, yes. till death, uh, <laughs> Do us complete part. for me. <laughs> Do us part. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> if you're believing like me that way, yeah. you don't have to separate. Mm -hmm. You continue living together, but you run your your affairs uh -huh. with boundaries and continue uh -huh. and you survive. Uh -huh. Coping mechanisms uh -huh. are very necessary uh -huh. in this case. Okay. Mm. All right. Any other? Where? Um, be assertive. We said that before, but I repeat again. Mm. It is good to be assertive. Yes. At workplace especially. Yes. If you have a, a work colleague who is uh, an assist, yes. be assertive. Yes. As long as being assertive is knowing what is right and studying for it. Yes. As long as you know what you are doing is right, yes. the narcissistic person will always want to sway you, yes. to make you see as if you are on the wrong. Mm -hmm. But just stand your feet, yes. on your feet. Yes. Stand your ground yes. and uh, you manage. Very soon they get, uh, they get deflected and mm -hmm. Right. They will not now, they realize you are the wrong person to kind of push around. Mm -hmm. So they will move to another victim. They they know they are victims mm -hmm. because their victims are the ones who are ready to feed their ego. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do these people ever change? Uh, I believe, as a Christian, I believe anybody can change uh -huh. because we say Christ comes to bring new life in us. Yes. But in normal circumstances, a, a human being can only change mm -hmm. when they are willing to change. Mm -hmm. But you cannot change them. Mm -hmm. If change starts with them, mm -hmm. they can change. Yes. If they are seeking help. You yes. said they, they can seek help yes. through a professional counselor mm -hmm. and they are taken into sessions that are necessary. Yes. So I wouldn't say that they cannot change. Yes. They can change. Yeah. Although some studies show yes. that even when they start counseling sessions, yes. majority of them do not go through the journey to the head ah. because of mistrust. Oh. They drop along the way. Uh -huh. That is a challenge. Uh -huh. But I believe there are those that can complete the journey and change. But if you are living with a narcissist and you are telling yourself that you can change them, I would advise you to give up because you can't change them. Mm -hmm. Even for an ordinary person, you cannot change a person. Yeah. You can only change yourself. Yes. So I would advise whoever is living with them mm -hmm. to see how to cope mm -hmm. or to see how to change themselves mm -hmm. than expect to change the narcissistic person. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as, as, this, uh, as, as a psychologist, eh, I'm also seeing that uh, the, person, the, uh, the person living with, with the narcissist uh, would also at some point require therapy because of the many issues that uh, they go through with them. What would you say about it? Yeah, I know as a psychologist that that would be possible. Yes. Uh, as a sociologist. Thank now. you, Jane. Yes. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> yeah. I think even self-awareness starts from there. Yeah. 
a person would be suffering, would be feeling very bombarded, ever getting criticism, uh, receiving blame for every kind of failure at whatever level, especially at family level. If this person is not having enough support system, it can be difficult for them. So if you are living with an assistic person, and uh, you want to live on and manage your life. You need outside support, strong support system. Support system are these people who surround you, who uh, you kind of encourage you, who lift your moods, who even give you advice sometimes you can consult, mentors and all that. And it is very necessary to have professional counseling because it is from there that you'll be aware and it is from there that you will know how to set your boundaries. It is from there that you'll be able to kind of allow them to behave the way they are behaving without you being dragged into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> this is a person that actually is... Uh, really difficult to live with and uh, what I'm seeing is that uh, we've gone to looking at different levels of interaction with this person. Rachel, this can go on and on and on. Sure. But what, because of our time, I would uh, request you to share with, with us what is your parting shot on this kind of a person? My parting shot is that uh, our viewer it's good for us to acknowledge that uh, there is no person who enjoys being negative. So as much as you could find maybe your child, your son, your daughter, or maybe your partner or your workmate is a narcissist, it has a narcissistic character. It is not sometimes their choice. It is not that they enjoy behaving the way they are behaving. So the best way to live with them, first of all, understand them. And after you understand them, now know how to, to deal with them. You can even advise, approach them and if they are friends, if you have a friend, approach them and, and uh, recommend that they need to seek uh, professional counseling in order for them to benefit and in order for them to change. And if they are not willing to do that, life goes on. It is part of our society. These are our brothers, our sisters. Sometimes it is our mothers. And sometimes it's our mothers in law. And uh, you could use a lot of energy just reacting to them and trying to prove that you came, this is my husband, leave them and give them their space. And we can uh, easily continue to live in harmony in our society. I'm a sociologist, I said. So harmony is the key for us to live in this society. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel. Hey, you've really enlightened us. You've really, uh, I believe our viewer, you have uh, learned something. Uh, from Rachel and thank you, thank you so much for honoring our invitation and coming and uh, sharing this very critical uh, information to our viewer. And our viewer, if you are like me, I've learned so much. And before we close, I know you must have interacted with this kind of a person in one, on one, way, in one way or other. And I would request you to continue sharing with us what is your experience with this kind of a person. Probably from the sharing that uh, Rachel has, uh, uh, has, has shared with us, you have learned, you have realized, oh, Kube, the person that I stay with is a narcissist. Or the person I work with, the person that uh, you know, I'm having business with is a, a narcissist. And you, you, you know that, uh, as Rachel has, uh, has, has shared with us, is that you can seek help. We would like you to, to give us feedback. We would like you to, uh, to comment on our Facebook, Health Now Show, and also on our YouTube, Health Now Show. And uh, we'll be glad even to, uh, to continue supporting you and even uh, to sharing more information that can make your life healthier, make your life better, interactions, improvement, even your relationships are improved, 
And when we have all that, we have a whole person that is living a healthier life, more productive, and more enjoyable. And that is the objective of this Health Now show, that we are here to make your life better and healthier. Until next time, God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in on this show. Thank you.